you're getting into a little bit more uh, information and uh, specifics about uh, connecting with clients as well as um, healthcare information providers with regard to literacy and health related information. I'm really uh, privileged to be able to introduce um, Kathleen Anderson, Kat, uh, and she is with SageWorks, um, Accessible Health Communications from Austin, Texas. She is a member of our Sally Committee and was very, very helpful in us, uh, helping us put this program together and our input for putting the program together. So um, she works, her organization works with um, increasing the ability of all audiences, especially those with limited literacy, to be able to read, to comprehend, and act on health information. So, Kat, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and glad to see everyone here. It's nice to have a great audience like this. And nice to be following up on such a wonderful, wonderful introduction or uh, continuation of health literacy from Terry Davis, who's, as always, uh, inspiring and wonderful, and I'm so glad I was able to be there for that. And so we are going to talk um, at the sort of nitty-gritty level of health literacy today. Um, how do you get down there in that interaction between the provider or the resource person. Uh, many of you from uh, health agencies are not providers, but are the people who provide access or go out into the community and talk to people about healthcare. So how do you get right there in that interaction and uh, pass on what you know about health literacy? So what I'm gonna talk about today is um, mostly the low tech, high touch um, area of the spectrum um, and I'll be talking about something called collaborative composing. Um, so let's let's go right in uh, to, to just quick review some of those recommended strategies that Terry Davis was talking about this morning um, for improving communication between a user, an end user, and a provider or a community worker or uh, a social worker who's working with someone who's coming in and is at risk for HIV AIDS. So how, what are those strategies look like? They are explaining things clearly, focusing on key messages and repeating those key messages, using teach back, this is all review, Terry just said all this a few minutes ago, um, effectively soliciting questions, and this is where we come in. Focus or using patient-friendly educational materials to enhance that interaction. Not just to send them home with, the, with the, that great diabetes material, as Terry was saying, but using those, those patient-friendly materials as a tool in that interaction. Okay? So that's what we focus on at Sage Words, but we uh, were lucky enough to come down to San Antonio and um, to start working with the Health Collaborative at, and with Sally. And so we got involved in a project to create some materials, some prevention messages for women, Latinas, who are at high risk um, for, uh, for contracting HIV AIDS. So quick review, some of those strategies again that Terry talked about um, for patient-friendly educational materials. Cultural awareness was one I don't know that she actually mentioned, but it's key for us understanding who the end user is, okay? Graphics, we talked about those. We'll be talking a lot about those uh, later on. Using plain language, um, fonts and font size, we talked about that a little bit. This is annoying. Let me see if I can. Let me actually see if I can do it without. Yell at me or wave your hand around and say, speak up a little bit. Can you hear me now? 
Okay, let's try it without the microphone for the time being. Okay, and let's try it again. Oh, okay. 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 A little bit better. You can still hear me, but no feedback. Okay. Font size, we talked about that. Fifth grade reading level, everybody knows about this, but I want to stress that that is the, the very first condition, but certainly not the only condition that you need to have. In fact, we have done testing where we have used two different materials, both at the fifth grade reading level, and so both of them were materials that people could understand, but the one that used other strategy, strategies in addition to that were the ones that were successful. Just being able to read is not enough. It's a necessary but not a sufficient condition. Plenty of white space and user input into the content. So we boiled these down to three key strategies. All the others you need to have, you need to be aware of them, but these are the ones we believe make the most difference. The kind of graphics that you use, having that end user input into the content and being culturally attentive. Terry uh, this morning talked a little bit about um, uh, the providers not knowing what it is that their patients don't know. And having user input into the content is the only way you can find out what the patients know. <coughs> you need to know what they know as well as what they don't know in order to be able to give them materials that are going to be really useful to them, that are meaningful and useful at the same time. So what was the process for this uh, project that we embarked upon with the Health Collaborative and with Sally? Um, there was the first part of the process was the getting together, the uh, gathering of an expert panel, and that happened. I'll talk a little bit more about this through the auspices of the Health Collaborative, who, as you have heard, has its many, many pieces, many parts in this community, and so they were in fact able to do this for us. They brought to the table some key players to discuss, first of all, what is going to be the message of this material that we were going to construct. Prevention, HIV, AIDS, Latinas. What, what actually was the message going to be? So we sat around a table with groups, and I'll identify them in a minute, um, to talk about what the message would be. Protection was the, the primary message. This is for women who are at risk of HIV, AIDS. And so that included condom use and testing. Why it's important to do those two things, use condoms and get tested. Offering help and encouragement to do it, that's the action part of it. You, know, you can tell them it's a good thing to do, or as Terry said, you can tell me I need to exercise five times a week, but that's like telling me that you know, I need to go to the moon. So why, why do it as a key piece? And then key to this was where resources for testing could be found. So that was, that was what we agreed upon. But we really focused on, in the user panel, the idea that we really needed to know the end user. We needed to have cultural awareness of who that person was. And so in the expert panel, in that room, were many people who serve the San Antonio community. There were HIV AIDS uh, providers in Bear County, um, who many of them themselves were Latinas. And one of the very important things that came out of that discussion was the importance of the different ages of the Latina women. The recognition that the message about prevention and testing would need to be very different if you were 19 as opposed to if you were 65. Right, so that was absolutely key uh, to how we started to develop the message. And what we decided was that we would develop three materials, one for the jovencitas, the 18 to 29 year olds, one for the damas, the 30 to 45 year olds, and then for the donas, the 45 and older. Okay, so that was our, our key piece, yes. Where's between domas and donas? Because that's where I fall and I don't, I don't see the age group there. 45, oh, there it is. 45 and older. Sorry. 
<laughs> I think we have our bases covered. <laughs> and of course, those age groups are they're they're, they're numerical but flexible, of course. Um, in the Hovensitas group are many young women who are much younger than 18 who need access to this kind of information as well. But this is our general uh, grouping. Okay? So the second thing, thing we did in the expert panel was we worked on choosing the form. What were we going to provide in the way of patient education materials? Were we just going to give out a flyer, a brochure? Was it going to be a booklet? Um, and the idea of photo novellas was really key again at the beginning of this project. So how many of you are familiar with photo novellas? How many of you are not familiar with photo novellas? Okay. So a photo novella um, is basically a, a booklet. It's really a comic book format except it uses photographs, not drawings. And it's not about comedy at all. <laughs> Um, in any way, shape, or form. And you can see here is a, a standard page from a very traditional photo novella, which uses primarily dialogue to get the message across. So it's a little story. You all know telenovelas, right? Um, and so this is photo novellas, which were in fact, um, they, are, they were developed as um, synopses of movies in the 1950s. Um, in Latin and Central America and they were very very popular so they started out in this kind of context of um, uh, summarizing um, these 1950s movies which were often about sex and so on and so forth and, and action and adventure and they became subsequently a tool to educate <laughs> about sexual risk and action and adventure. In the 1970s, um, they were be became very popular, and there's an astounding number that, of these that were produced in the 1970s, in the millions of copies in Mexico and other countries. So they were a very popular way of delivering health information, and especially popular with middle-aged Latino women, um, who were at least a third of our target audience. and. There's evidence that shows that it's a successful medium for delivering health education um, in this particular way. Okay? More reasons why photo novellas. They are inherently health literate. Okay? They rely primarily on graphics and dialogue, and dialogue is very little text. You know, so you don't have a big paragraph of information that tells you all kinds of things. You have a conversation between people. And in our case, we realized that the conversations in our little photo novellas actually modeled what we hoped that the end user would be able to say. <coughs> so we can use them as models. You can actually read one of these and say, oh, I think I can say that to my boyfriend. <laughs> and actually use those words as models. Um, they're narratives. And of course, storytelling is a most compelling way of getting information across. It's really effective. Um, you remember that uh, Terry talked about the automated telephone calls, and she said that they began with stories. Okay? So those automated telephone calls are their way of engaging people, drawing them in right from the very beginning. Um, and then the other thing, the final thing, is that if, if you do a photo novella well, then, then you see yourself in those, those characters. They are who you are. Uh, and that becomes a really effective motivator. Okay. So let's talk for a few minutes about graphics in general. Okay. This, this is the, the graphics, uh, I think all but one maybe, from a brochure. And what I'm going to ask you to do is tell me what do you think the topic of this brochure is? Any any guesses? Any clues? Education. Education. Any other guesses? Health. Health. health? What makes you think it's health related? Stethoscope. The stethoscope. Yes. Okay. We got a little cue in the graphic there. Okay. And the the there's a a doctor who's got a piece of paper and describing something or talking about something to a patient. Any other ideas? Family. 
family. It could be about family, yes, because you've got the, the family down there at the bottom. Yeah? The guy, the guy on the right's really drunk, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what is he doing, Allie? He looks nice. <laughs> he looks nice? <laughs> He's very pleasant. <laughs> what, what emotion, yes? Sorry? Health education for all ages. Right. Well, we've got all those ages down there at the bottom. Okay. This is a, a brochure about bipolar disorder. Yep. A story of bipolar disorder. There he is. Happy as a clam, right? <laughs> He says, I knew there was something wrong with him. <laughs> so the point about this is, of course, that you, graphics are great and they're important. And in fact, even we, we've done a little bit of research that says, even if you just put pictures into it, no matter what the pictures are, people respond better to it. They'll, they'll be more likely to read it. So you might be more likely to We want to find out about this guy um, because of the graphics, but you have no idea really what the content is at all. And so our, our goal is to use the graphics closely linked to the text so that the graphics tell the story as well. This is actually a really well done brochure in other ways, in other health literate ways. You can see it has lots of white space, great big font, nice chunking of information, et cetera, et cetera. But the graphics are not working for it. I admit, it's hard to imagine what graphics would work for bipolar disorder. <laughs> but. Here, here is what um, we are doing in terms of graphics with the photo novella, with the form itself um, really directing us as to how the graphics can be effective. Okay. We um, also chose, or uh, the, the users helped us choose formats that reflected the reader. So for our younger age group, the Hovensitas, we built a very small um, flyer, and I'll show you these in just a minute. Um, because one of the main concerns of this age group is confidentiality. They don't want to be carrying around a big piece of paper or leaving it on the desk for their parents to find, et cetera, et cetera. So having it <coughs> small was really key. For the middle age group, um, this, is, this was an interesting thing that arose out of the expert panel primarily. Um, they decided that perhaps that middle group, and I'm, I'm going to try really hard not to call them middle-aged, even though that's where they are, that middle group um, they thought would be more interested in a magazine format or a revista format rather than a typical photo novella. So we started out with that and we took that concept to the end users and they really liked it. So for the doñas, for the older women, the traditional photo novella seemed like it was going to work the best. So that's what we started out in terms of with the format. At this point is when we took it, um, well, let me actually back up and say this is really the high touch piece of this project was twofold. That first step of going to the expert panel and gathering many of you, some of you in the room here, um, together at a table to talk about what it was we actually wanted to have. And these, these people are experts, not from the user sense, but from the provider sense. They know the clients. They know the people that they're working with. They know what kinds of barriers there are for those clients, both in uh, feeling comfortable with getting tested and um, using protection, but also in getting access to information and resources. Um, they have lots of great insights into their clients. Uh, they also had access to clients, which helped us later on when we wanted to actually have the users create the materials. And they had expertise and experience. And so that, that crucial high-touch piece uh, was really at the bottom, at the foundation of this project that we couldn't have done without. So the second piece of high-touch was on the user end rather than on the provider end. 
okay? And we did that in two ways. We engaged in this process called collaborative composing, which we're going to do some of in a minute. And then from our point of view, very, very crucial is using what's called usability testing so that when we actually completed a draft, of our, of our uh, material, we took it back to the clients and said, what do you think? So then they gave us feedback at that point. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, does anybody know what, have, are you familiar with usability testing? Is this something you've heard of before? Some people, yes. Most people, it sounds like no. Not, not familiar with usability testing. Okay, well, we'll be sure to talk about that at length in a few minutes. Questions so far? Okay, so let's talk for a minute about collaborative composing. My, um, the, the longest piece of my, my um, somewhat scattered background uh, as a career person is in teaching and mostly in adult education and as a teacher of writing. And so we took this concept really from writing classes. Um, where you uh, focus on the generation of as many points of view as possible. You have a group writing activity. And the key for this project and for health literacy projects is that the end user actually writes the text. Not us. <laughs> not the health literacy expert, not the provider. And so, in Terry Davis's words, the text is organized from the user's perspective. It's them telling us what needs to be said. Um, and the end user also had uh, <coughs> input in this case into the actual design. Um, so it's much, I think it's much clear, it's very clear to me that if, if it's somebody who you're, you're aiming at, they can tell you what's important, what they do and what they don't know. You, we can guess at it. We, we know what's important for us. We know what the message is we want to convey, but what does it mean to them? Okay, so, and I'm just going to stop here for a minute and look at the, the revistas, the revista, the damas version of our photo novella, and talk a little bit about the process that we used, and then we're actually going to go in and do some of it yourself. So we had some, we had a number of different exercises. We gathered together groups, thanks to the organizations whose names you saw before of typical users from those three age groups. In each group, we did it a little bit differently. For the Damas group, because it was a magazine article or a magazine, we had several different exercises. So one of them, for example, was colors. We just said, okay, here's colors. Let's describe those colors and describe them in terms that have to do with how you feel about yourself and getting tested for AIDS. That's a kind of a complicated activity, but they were great at it. They were really great at it. We, we gave them a prompt that said, here's an article. Um, it's like, you know, like intervie interviewing um, Angelina and Brad, okay? Um, except in this case, it's a couple who've just gotten back together after the, the young the husband has been in prison for 10 months, okay? And he's learned while he's in prison that he's HIV positive. How would you write this art? Write it for us. Write it right here and now. And they did. They did. Um, <coughs> we borrowed from those many, many, many magazine articles where there are five ways to do X, Y, or Z. You know, five ways to lose weight, five ways to stretch your, your, uh, the items in your closet, uh, five ways to fill up your handbag, you know, so on and so forth. So we had five ways to stay safe, and we had a similar one for condom use. So we gave them prompts, and they wrote them. Okay, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that process um, right now, because what I'm going to do is this. This was the, one of the prompts that we uh, did not use for the donias. Okay, so Felix has come home after ten. Well, maybe this was the. About after 10 months in prison, and his wife and children are very happy, um, and so is his mother. She's very happy, but she's a little worried. Okay. So then the group of Donias then had to take this exercise with the Donias, the two women, and the blank 
um, cartoon bubbles and fill them in. Any questions so far? So let's do a little bit of it. I have uh, three exercises and we have nice table groups right here. So uh, we have Damas, Donias, and Jovencita exercises. Um, so let's pass them out and at your table take a stab at following the instructions on the exercise. Now I have to say that um, a conference and a workshop like this is not a great context. <laughs> Um, for doing this in a classroom setting where it's a little more intimate and you have a lot of, you have a facilitator who can work with the group it, it makes it a little bit easier but let's give it a try and you'll see what that feels like so. so in your groups in each of your groups um, you can just choose to fill out one just have one scribe one person who writes um, but look at the prompt. Uh, talk about talk amongst yourselves, um, and then see if you can't actually come up with a dialogue. In the case here, a dialogue about uh, Josefina and Helen. Okay, you might have that one. You may have the advice column. I don't know who has the advice column, or you may have uh, the third one, which is the the Donius one. So, talk amongst yourselves. Oh, you don't have one. Oh, which would you like? Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. See what you come up with. And uh, I'll, I'll drift around from table to table. We're going to take about 15 minutes uh, to do this exercise.
um, how do I talk? Or do you have any advice? Or do you have any? Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any advice? Um, uh, help. Do you have any advice on how I talk to my son about uh, sex and and dating or sex and marriage?
cat, we had to say one. It was very interesting in ours because when they selected the message, the first one was talking to their son about sex, number one, because we didn't know the age of the son. And the second one, we started out with relationships. And then the dialogue said, no, it says in here that he's seen several different women. And the consensus of the group became, that's not developing relationships, that's dating, yeah. or that's casual sex. So when you drill down, is the point sexual health and relationships, or is it sexual health and then being safe in casual relationships, or is it sexual health and dating? And so just in the dialogue and going around the thing, how you begin to find clarity on what what's your point, what's your message, what's your what are your what's your main uh, right. what's your main goal? All right, exactly. And so does the mother want to talk? Do the donies want to talk to each other about how to go about talking to their right. son, or do they want to talk to each other about how to talk to their son and maintain a relationship yeah. with their son? Yeah. You know, and it's all that. Yeah. So it becomes very complex and very interesting. Right. And you can see that taking it from this.
talk to each other. Um, how they were, how Josephine was going to talk to Helen. They were, they were trying to figure out how to raise the subject. Uh-huh. And they were trying to salvage, not, not salvage, but trying to talk to each other. That, that, that was the focus of, right. of uh, our, uh, we had the donors, and they, they were trying to talk to each other. And that, that, that talked about the sun. Right. And uh, we, what we were focusing on, they were close enough friends that they could talk to each other. Uh-huh. And that was the focus of our, uh, and, and that actually is very key. I mean, that, that very point, how do you bring this up in some ways is the message that we wanted to get across. How do you actually have to actually get people to have these conversations? So you were kind of right on the note there. And in fact, that, in some sense, we came to the conclusion was really one of the essential principles. Just ask over and over here. And you need to have Here's a model for how you can start it. And we know it's going to be really difficult to start it. So that's really important. How about a quick uh, rundown from the back table since we we're actually running out of time and we have a little more to go. Any, any quick thoughts from the back table? Are there some of those things that young girls in my life It's done one-on-one, 
Okay, you do it for one on one with the user. And it's not just about opinions because you're getting that information about comprehension, about <coughs> understanding what the message is. So it's not just, I like the graphics, I don't like the graphics. I like the color of her dress, I don't like the graphics. It's not just that, although sometimes opinions are really important. So what we did was we created drafts of our photo elements and then we took them back to user groups, not user groups, user individuals that we have. Provided us with, and we asked them first to just look at what we've done and to think aloud. Sometimes that gets you lots of information, sometimes that gets you, mm, I don't even know what to say. And sometimes it gets you, well, that, that color is not great. But that's a, an initial process. At least give some time to look through the material and read it and become accustomed to it. Then we asked them to do a test. This one was for the Hope and Seat test. Photo novel. So we asked them after they've gone through it, what, what we asked them to tell us, what would you say to your partner if you wanted to do this conference? And what we were really looking for was whether or not they would pick up any the language from the book because they didn't always, but they, they pretty much always were able to have something that they would initiate that conversation with. And that was crucial. That was really important. Um, we asked them where would, where's one place they would go to get tested, and then we asked them some more opinion-like questions, like which graphics did you like, was there any part that you didn't like, what, what, what struck you, what didn't struck you. So we got a lot of information. Usability testing says that you only need about five users to test your materials before you get enough information and you start getting repetition. So obviously this is not research. Not a research sample, it's just enough to give you what you think your average user is going to do. I think this is essential in the creation of the economy. Absolutely essential to go out and test your users. Okay, so here's what we learned when we took our, our Doña's photo novella. This is the first page <coughs> of our Doña's photo novella. We gave the whole thing. Okay, everybody had a chance to read that first page. <coughs> so, what we learned from this is that for every woman who tested it, the size of this one is this. So, the font was too small. I think we would have known that from the front, but we were interested in, in other things. So that's the one of the main things that we learned. We can't present this like this. It has to be big. Okay. All of them understood testing this way. So that was not a problem. None of the people, on none of the three, none of the other three so far, saw that in the middle of this was a page of resources where to go to get this. None of them. And that was one of our main points. What we could have done had we been, as Terry did said, just checking off. We've, we've done the material, we've got it out there, we've handed it off. Our job is done. We could have done that and nobody would have gotten the message. Because the main message is where is that going to go to get an angel? They were so interested in the story, they never got to the research. So that we have to deal with. Maybe you would, you would uh, make that conversation in the novella. In the, in the you would, uh, she would say, like, well, do you know where I could get tested? Oh, maybe yes. that's actually or something, you know. That's great. Right. That's really the easy. The conversation goes into the story. The one that's seen the story. Well, that's good. Exactly. Right. 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 Really respond. 
responded kind of strongly to the cover. Um, in particular, we, as a, as a group beforehand, had some real, real indecision about color midnight. First of all, I said, who uses black lipstick? Well, that shows my age. Right? <laughs> but um, the, the users responded really strongly to the idea of a shadow side, which was language from them. That's how they described this color, was the idea of having a shadow side. Um, so that was really, really interesting. They really liked this film a lot. And the other things inside are a couple reunited after 10 months. What is your most important accessory? The answer? Condoms. <laughs> uh, five ways to stay safe and then find them where to get tested. But again, nobody went to the testing. Nobody found that we didn't have to prompt them to find the resources. Okay? So here's the Hogan Cita one. Um, again, six out of seven missed the research page. Most of them got the idea as testing as the main message, but more interesting in this one was that five clients said they would pick it up because they needed the information. That was really important. And the other four said they would pick it up because it was interesting. Yay! <laughs> just what we're looking for. Okay? So, just quickly on the high tech. We are now on the revision stage. We have to revise all three of them, some a little bit more extensively than others before they go back out. how to get those resources to pop out without putting them on the front page where we don't want them. We want them to, to not be on the front page. And then we're on to the high tech. Interestingly enough, photo novellas were the first films that got translated to paper. And now we're hoping, especially with the Hobbitsita one, which is uh, this size, i.e. cell phone size, smartphone size into an app, okay? And if it were an app, this is how it would function. Okay, so there, there she is. See, see those little clouds back there? Those cloud bubbles? <laughs> so here is the whole Hogan's of the app. I'll do it slowly so you can have a little bit of time to do it. This is what it would do on your cell phone. Yes, 
And I was shocked that the women had <coughs> the girls had never seen a female doctor. Uh -huh. So they were just taking yeah. up the brain. Yeah. And the male, a uh, lot of responses, they, they weren't aware that they had expiration dates. Mm -hmm. These are college kids. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because you're not supposed to talk about this. Right. That's right. Yeah, but I noticed that they were all like embarrassed to pick them up and they just passed by, but as soon as it started getting dark, man, they were just putting them <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I just have one um, final thing to say before I uh, thank you for being a wonderful audience uh, and attending so so well, and that is that um, high, touch, high, high Touch, High Tech, High Tech is wonderful. You know, we all need to be going. But, the essential thing about my touch is that's where we get the message. So it's really, really important. Take Terry Davis's automated telephone calls. Okay, so the pose, the voice, and the words of those automated telephone calls were so not like what the client needed to hear, all jargony, um, said, spoken too quickly, any of those things. Derail that project right there. So it's that piece, and I, I'm assuming since Terry Davis did it, and that she did that beforehand. In other words, she took the message first and used these kind of high touch uh, elements to get the message right before she got the delivery over on the other <coughs> side. So that's really key in all that you're doing. The last point I'd like to make is that. Um, the um, Health Collaborative submitted this um, uh, project to the National All Parts Meeting for the Health Resources and Services Administration that we uh, held in Washington, D.C. in um, November. It was a collaboration between our Part D project, Ryan White Part D project, and Part A project, and we've been accepted. So this will go national and be shown at a workshop in Washington, D.C. in November. The second announcement I'd like to make is many of you are from our HIV and service providers, and for those of you who are not, I'm really speaking to you. Uh, we're going through the last phase of um, doing the tweaks, as Kat said, and the fotonovelas will be ready for printing and distribution shortly after the first of the year. If you would like to be a, a dissemination point for the fotonovelas, please uh, send an email to the Health Collaborative, Elizabeth De La Fuentes, because we're looking for at least five sites, some of them not HIV sites, some of them boys and girls, whatever you can use them to do these, the open secret ones for the older ones. They're 18 years and up because, as you know, in Texas, we can't deal with kids below the age of consent 18. So that's where they're going to go. If you'd like to be a demonstration site, we're going to try and follow up with a small evaluation asking you, who did you disseminate them to? How were they received? And then did you do any follow up to see whether or not they actually took action? So that's all part of the process of this project. So this is a real life thing that's going to happen in San Antonio, and you could be a part of it to make it happen. So thanks, Kat, so much. is right. I hope that you will jot, look at the objectives for this particular session. Again, jot down a couple of takeaway points that you got. What's most significant? It is a process in putting something together in order to achieve success. And one of the biggest things that she's emphasized is that you have a script, we have the expertise in developing the material, we have the input, but you want to involve the end user because otherwise